I'm actually talking through my ear, everybody. So let me start. About 60% of the human body is water and is essential to biological life. According to a doctor survey by Medical Daily, 75% of Americans suffer from dehydration. So we'd like to address this issue. Now, we've come up with a great name for the app already. Go H2O is a water consumption tracker. It'll keep track of the amount of water a participant drinks in a day and encourage hydration. The Institute of Medicine recommends that men consume 13 cups and women consume nine cups of water daily. Wow. So Go H2O is not just for the health conscious or extreme athlete. Everybody can benefit from being hydrated. Now, Go H2O is simple, easy to use Android app and uh, has visual aid to encourage hydration through the day. So it looks something a little like this. The operator will click off these buttons right here and fill that glass through the day to make sure they get their eight ounce, uh, their eight, eight ounce servings of water to stay hydrated. It's just a simple tracker, but it's <laughs> It's got some issues in terms of it's going to keep that information over a day, so it's using a MIDI database function, which is still new to me. So there was a question in the chat, does coffee count? Uh, it actually, amongst purists, is actually considered neutral. Uh -huh. Beer is mostly water, says Matt. Of course he would know that. <laughs> Vodka is clear. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's just hope that doesn't come up in class. <laughs> There's a great deal of work that's already been done on this. Kristen is uh, doing a wonderful job, and so is Noah, and they're just bringing me along, which is wonderful. Any questions? So it said 13 cups and nine, but you have eight, eight glasses. Yeah. That's Ralph, I'm glad you picked up on that. Uh, the, the recommended. It's just like a common um, rule of thumb because it's so nice to say eight by eight ounces. So everybody sort of uses that as a rule of thumb guide. But uh, it's actually a different recommended amount for men and women. And we're not at this point to whether or not we're going to confirm that we're going to make that an option so that the user has to identify first as a man or woman and then have those be different amounts. Well, that seems like a fairly simple thing you should add to it. Uh, I, would, I would agree. But at this point, um, I'm going to hold on to make sure that, that we're all set. We're all set with that first before we commit to it. You just have to input: Are you a male or female? And then once they do it, adjust how how quickly the glass fills up. Or just the variable. Yeah, I I think it shouldn't be that difficult. I want to make sure that we get everything else running first before we add that feature. I think it can be done. Okay. Okay. I think if you design it with that feature in mind, it might be easier than building it and then deciding you want to have that feature and having to redo it. I concur. But it sounds like a great app. I would use it. <laughs> okay, now. Trying to find my disconnect here. Is Leon and Dan, I think, yeah. Uh, yep, uh, I'm here. Uh, Leon, you there? Did he make it today? I saw him. Uh, I saw him on the list, yeah. I think he said he was switching computers. Uh, he texted me. Oh, so he's I don't know muted. If... He was mute. He's muted. I see him. Yep. Oh, OK. You're muted, Leon. Uh, is he, a, is he unmute? Well, go ahead, Dan, share your screen or... All right, so uh, Leon and I had a, some meeting issues, um, but we are going to be getting together uh, tomorrow. Um, but we think we came up with a pretty good idea. And uh, before I saw the template for the pitch, I, uh, I came up with another pitch, more like a sham wow pitch. So I could do that one. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just share my screen so you can read it at the same time in case okay. anybody uh, misses anything. 
So uh, okay. uh, I want to just, I just want to, we get, we're going to have to do a better job and it's a, mostly Pauline and my fault um, of, of keeping on pace here because it's already 3.40 and we still have half of you to go. So we'll All be, right. We'll be, uh, try to keep it to two minutes. All right. It'll be quick. <laughs> promise. All right. So uh, I think I'm sharing my screen now. Okay. So do you have moments in your life when you feel stressed? Sometimes during these times of need, you only have your phone and are in need of some guidance. Well, why not open the Stress Reliever app, better name to come? After unleashing your stress out by shaking the phone furiously, it soothes you with a random peaceful image, memorable common quote, and a harmonious sound that will relax anyone. I have heard that it can even calm the Hulk in his most rageful times. Sick of the stock images provided? Take your own pictures to add to the random list in order to customize your own soothing needs. Unlike those other applications that make you watch meditation videos whilst you are hulking out and are about to pile draft someone, the stress reliever application gives you instant relief as soon as you give it a wild shake. So the idea was, uh, you know, I have some stock images and uh, sounds and uh, some quotes that are nice and soothing and uh, let the users also add their own to their list, like they take a picture or we're also debating on, uh, you know, adding, they can add quotes too, because that'd be pretty easy to add just text to list or add their own sounds if they look into how you can add sounds um, off your phone, maybe. But so they can kind of customize their own. And then, you know, if you're feeling stressed out, you can open the app, shake the phone. And, you know, maybe if you put pictures in of, I don't know, something that makes you uh, soothful, uh, you know, it might help out. Uh, with some, because people seem to be stressed out a lot, you know, so. Sounds like it's very trendy. I, <laughs> I saw on TV just the other night, Rage Rooms, where you oh. can, for 50 bucks an hour, <laughs> you can go in and destroy a room. <laughs> no, that'd be cool. What is that? I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. It, you'll have images, you'll have sounds. It takes advantage of some randomness, uh, you know, adding stuff from your camera. Um, and then if you, time, if, you get, if you get really adventurous with this, not for this project, but later on, you can measure how furiously they shake it. Oh, yeah. And uh, adjust the image based on that. I talked about having a, um, uh, we talked about having a, like a sliding scale, but it's hard to do. Like what image do you show if they're stressed out at one versus 10, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it'd be hard to scale that, but yeah. Or you I could just give them a number for that. Oh, That's a number for that. Right, right. A random picture anyway. Since they're right. So I, think, I think it's doable. It kind of uses everything we kind of just learned. So, yep. I think it's a better alternative than just throwing your phone. Exactly. Just got to shake it. Maybe you should have a tether, though, for it in case they shake it. <laughs> uh, the app comes with a tether. I like that. <laughs> it's like uh, the Wii, you know? You have to put the strap on because people were throwing it through their screens. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right, good. Leon, are you there? Anyway, we like it. All right. Sounds okay. good. The next... Any, any other questions on that one or comments? comments. Somebody said, uh, puppy pictures, Leon has no audio. It's okay. We can see the chat. All right. Yeah. Puppy pictures are always nice, you know, <laughs> soothing. Kitten, kitten pictures. <laughs> yeah. Little babies with dirty diaper pictures. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, Liz and Matt are next. Monica, I'm there. Liz, watch the road. I'm not driving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so we have created an app that is sort of similar to, let me get the other screen up, I'm sorry. Let's see. How do I get this thing out of the way? Sorry. Got to see another window. Uh, so while Matt's doing that, I'll kind of talk about. Um, so we defined an app. Uh, originally, we had the idea of doing an augmented communication app. Um, but then we kind of looked and saw that there was already a really good uh, you know, app in the marketplace for that. So we were thinking to kind of uh, 
transitioned to more of like a learning app for toddlers. So that's where we ended up. Yeah, I'm sorry. So let's see. So here's our, so, so it's animal apps. So this app helps children learn the names and the sounds of different settings. So unlike similar apps, this app gives children the choice to interact with the animals. So they can either speak the name or hear the sounds and push buttons and see, and see the pictures and hear the names. So it's a combination of the old speak and spell and the this, this say and speak. So it gives uh, uh, the, the children both choices there. So we have five screens. So the main screen is uh, one button for each type of animal. So first they would choose which animal, they're, which type of animal they're gonna use, either jungle or farm or polar or ser Serengeti safari animals. And then once they get into one of the screens with the farm animals, for example, um, they have the choice. They could either push the button and um, they would uh, see a large picture and hear the name or they can speak the name into the phone and it would hear or into the uh, device and it would play the animal sound. So it gives them a couple options. And then there's a return home. They could either pick another category, uh, which would bring them back to the home screen or they can close the app right from there. And here's some example of the coding we have in there. Yep, I like, I see closed screen, I see the closed screen block, block being used, that's good. Yes, we, yes. we, we have the closed screen to uh, return back to the home screen, so if, that, if they want to pick another category or close down the whole app altogether. Very nice. Now, one question we both have is, what age group is this for? It, it can be varied, so, so Liz has a, a one-year-old, I have a 10-year-old, and it's probably somewhere in between, I would say probably a two to three-year-old. Um, so we're thinking preschool. Actually, you know, what occurred to me initially is that the um, when you told that story of the preschool students and the issues they had, we're trying to make sort of an improvement on that and use our soundboard app that we've used before. So to make it more realistic. So and, and we talked a lot about, you know, there's a lot of words, but again, kids just figure it out and they start pushing buttons and they realize what they can do. And I think it worked visually. The only thing that might be an issue visually is the close app and pick another category that they, they have to read that so and this is for everybody don't you don't have to feel limited i know this one talks about graphics and drawing and what i'd like to do with my students and tell the teachers about is how this is an opportunity for you to learn about other types of graphics so don't feel limited to when you put these buttons there that you have to just use the background or the text that's there there are only four different types, for example, of fonts in App Inventor. You can go into Google Drive, for example, and open up a Google Doc and insert a drawing and make a shape that has some text on it using whatever font you want from Google uh, Docs and then save that as an image and upload it to be your button. Yeah, I actually, um, and this is, a, this is the version of the app that I sent Matt last night. Last night around midnight I um, I actually did just that so I went to uh, Google draw and made kind of a, a prettier looking text um, for the home screen um, just to kind of make it look a little more like fun and kid friendly um, I as far as age group I tried it out with my four-year-old nephew um, and he seemed to really like the the pushing and then saying the animal's name and then hearing the, you know the lion roar or whatever so yeah. yep. I think that's a so as we transition to the, the next group, I think that's a good um, a good reminder to everybody that you should have some user testing going on. And I think that's at the bottom of create one in the explanation of the project. All right, we're gonna have to keep moving though. Nice work. That looks great. So next up is Eric and Sterling. Hello, I'm here. All right, so we're going to look off of my computer. Um, if you guys can see it, it should pop up here in just a moment. Uh, Eric, go ahead and correct me if I say anything wrong. Uh, what we did is we just came up with a concept of a, a type of Pictionary. Uh, we're going to call it something different. Um, 
I, I forgot what we were going to call it. We have it listed somewhere draw else. Draw me, I think we said. Yeah, draw me is what we were going to call it. Thank you. And what we have is basically a home screen with four different categories. Um, one is class review where you can put in your own words. And basically you choose a category and then it takes you to a screen that says tap when ready. Um, when you tap it, it takes you to a screen that or a word pops up and it tells you this is the word. You either tap I got it which will then take you to a screen to draw in three colors uh, and you can wipe it clean. If you don't know what the word means, you can get a hint or if you need to get a new word, you can tap new word. Um, there's a timer. After the timer goes uh, off, there'll be a, a warning that comes up that just says time's up and then you can start over and you can go through and do it again. Uh, under the settings, we're going to have it set up so you can create a custom word list. Um, you can set the timer to be different amounts of time. So you can put in some words here and then you can set whether you want to have the sound go or not. Some of these features we're not sure if we're going to be able to do, but we thought we would do a hybrid of paint pot and the uh, magic eight ball and try to get a randomizer with the uh, drawing in there at the same time. Okay. I, I think uh, I'm a little worried it's too ambitious. That's looking at some of the other ideas. That's kind of what I'm starting to think. Um, what, about, what about just doing a part of the top, doing the top part, not the settings part? Okay. So I, even, I even would say the, the top first five that you have and then pick one category and do, uh -huh. a, do a couple examples. You can set up the user interface so it looks like it has all of those things, just not program them all. Oh, okay. So we could visually do it, but only program just a certain area that would be okay right and yeah, the other advice is uh, perhaps try to reduce the number of screens you have to get to for go through before you get to draw i might mean, okay. say try to look at the resources and use some of the virtual screens don't actually use new screens right virtual screen that that's something i was thinking about too is even if it just hides or yeah. it's not really a new screen but it looks like a new screen might exactly. be a way to do it yep mm -hmm. Like that second screen seems like it might not be necessary. Once they pick sports, couldn't they go right to the third screen and just have a word and? Yeah, that, that could work too. Yeah, so try to think about that. Managing screens gets to be a hassle uh, as you build out the app. So if you can minimize that, minimize the number, that's a good idea. Okay. And you've okay. got a lot going on there, especially if you want to have a timer and some of these other. Some right. Of these we understood that. We were thinking uh, shoot for the moon and see what we can get done. By the, way, by the way, things like time's up, start over, you can handle those with notification. Oh, okay. You don't need a screen. Right? So even things like tap when ready, you can, that can be a notification also. Yeah, all of these don't necessarily need to be a screen, but if we put them all on one here, it would be really hard to see. Right, okay. right. So like these, it could even just pop up on top of it and yep. easily close. Yep. yep. All right, very nice idea. Uh, just be careful and keep it, keep the scope manageable. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, next up is Patty and Tanja. Tanja. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And pull up my document. All right, um, we have a student activity calendar. And um, the conversation started out, we both have schools where we have at the end of the day, um, a particular period, 45 minutes every day, where students get to choose what they do and where they go. Uh, whether it's for math help or whatever. Um, and there's lots of different ways of managing that. In our particular school, one of the problems we're discovering is students are signing up for um, a particular advisory or activity, um, and they're doing that on a Monday for the entire week, and then come Tuesday and Wednesday, they can't remember where they signed up. And because it's a sign up as a part to a report back, they're required to go to the administration to get help to figure out where they're supposed to be, and it's just wasting a lot of time. And so our solution was so that the kids could start to think about what their plan was for the week before signing and committing to a particular advisory. Um, it starts off with a calendar. I'm going to actually go really quickly down to what it would look like on a user interface. 
Here um, we have calendar months, and here are days. They would use the canvas um, function to be able to circle what month it was and what particular set of days their calendar included. Um, they have a press the button here that would start the scheduling process. Um, a choose your activity. If for if a Monday, there might be computer science help, um, cyber patriots, a club, or something of that nature, and they would choose among that list. I am, we ended up using list within lists to do that. Um, and then what happens is down below here, it confirms the day, whether it's Monday or Tuesday, um, this flips through with the next, and what the activity is. And until you hit next, it hasn't been committed. It's just a concept. So you can keep hitting the choose activity until you have exactly what you want to do, say, for a Monday. Once you're determined that's what you want to do, you hit next, this changes from uh, Monday to Tuesday, and you have another set of different activities that you can choose from. Um, we have that pretty much programmed. Where we're at right now is um, getting to go back to display. This is only one screen. It's not multiple screens. Um, and what we're trying to figure out is how to do a display, um, since there's not a print or a prompt or um, alert. Um, this is the first time I've ever used um, App Inventor. So um, we've been kind of playing around with the different blocks to see how to go about displaying. Once I've recorded um, my choices in a third list, how do I get them all to print out? But that's the ultimate goal. So it sounds like you've got, in addition to the design, you've got a lot of the programming done? Um, yeah, but it's still flexible enough. I mean, as far as we've gotten, I can show you what I have. No, no, no. Uh, send no, it, it, send looks, it to me, okay? Okay. It looks, it looks it looks good, and it looks complex and sophisticated enough to be a final project. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little worried that you've already done enough and um, for this first create task. And well, can you, can you think about ways that you can simplify it or, or enough to you know, wrap it up versus building it out to the point where it would qualify as a final project. Um, at this point here, um, all the, obviously, the first, uh, user interface has been done. The choosing the activities have been done, creating that third list. We're at a point now where the only thing from completing this is actually reporting back the entire list once it's been created. Uh -huh. All other coding has been done. We were really moving. <laughs> So send, send me the the AIA file, okay, Patty? And I'll take a look and I'll help you out. Real quick and a quick number, how many hours do you think you spent so far? Um, on the actual coding, um, between the two is probably maybe four hours. Um, I'm a little OCD, so the artwork, it's all my original work. Um, that was probably addictive, so I would say close to 10 hours. Okay. I spent far more on the imaging than I did on the coding. <laughs> well, you, you would... You would uh, you're doing way more than you need to do for the AP exam, but very nice work. Yes, send me that file. Okay, we'll do today. All right, thanks. Nice. Okay, next up is Van and Nick. Hello, everybody. Hi. So I'm home with my kids this week, and I'm chasing them to do chores, and so I thought of making a chore app. Uh, Van was very open to this, and so let's see if I can get my desktop up. Am I up? There it is. Yep. Great. So Chore ka -ching, productivity consultant Dennis Waitley writes, the greatest gift you can give your children are the roots of responsibility and the wings of independence. Our app Chore ka -ching, will give kids these roots and wings and their parents peace of mind. Chore ka -ching uses financial and social incentives to motivate kids to take responsibility for daily and weekly chores, independently track their progress, and watch their virtual piggy bank grow. So Van started working on our interface, and right now we're looking at perhaps fitting everything onto one screen. Um, down the road, we might look at a different screen for each kid, or maybe even an app with 
uh, different access points for uh, kids and parents. Uh, we plan to have graphics for different shores, and uh, we plan to have wages paid out to a virtual piggy bank, similar to the scoring on the MASH game. Uh, and I just was thinking that perhaps we could even use the camera to uh, allow the kids to document that their chores are done, take a picture of the cat food bowl, for example, and, um, and save that to a tiny DB. Since we're low on time, I think I'll stop there and ask for questions and feedback. Um, what well, thought that comes to my mind is the app, wouldn't the app, would the app be used by one child rather than Sam, Sarah, and Susan? So they would each have their own. It would be nice, I think, if all kids had their own devices and access to the app and the parents could um, access it from their own devices. I'm not sure um, how to execute that in our, the time allowed but that certainly sounds more feasible. I mean, it may, it, may be, it may be more feasible for this go around to just have the app focus on one child's chores. It's the same concept would work if you want, then want to expand it out from there. I don't know if that simplifies it or not. Sure. I, I, I concur. I, I started programming it about a half an hour ago, and I said, gosh, it'd be easy if it was one kid that we were worried about right now. Yeah, I think that would be fine, a fine way to change it. Okay. You can have a fight between Sam, Sarah, and Susan to see who gets to play with it. Maybe they could put their name in. Thanks, that's helpful. Any other? Any other? I have ideas, but like for final project stuff, there's so much you could do with this to get it to work with multiple children. Uh, like quickly, I'll just say if they have phones or something like that, you could text them what the chore is directly from your phone. Have your phone acting as a hub, as a parent. I'll learn to do that later. Right. That's not for today. That's good to know it's within reach in the next couple of weeks. Thanks. <laughs> it looks like a nice project, though. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, Dan and James. James, yes. Hey guys, we see you. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh. That would have been funny if they were Connecticut teachers, right, Connecticut teachers? <laughs> Find me Wi Fi. <laughs> So one of the complaints at our school is that the students, some of the students say they don't have Wi-Fi access. So this app would help them identify where they can find Wi-Fi locations for free. It's primarily targeted at students, but it could be beneficial to all that are seeking free Wi-Fi access in our local area for this first version. It'll show locations in Newcastle County and the user will select a city, and then there will be a list for selecting a location from that to pop up on the map. And each of the listed locations will have been verified as having free Wi-Fi with either completely free or free with purchase in store, and then have space available for the users to work. On the main screen, you'll see the map and two list pickers, one for the city, one for the location, and it'll pop up on the map for that location. List selection, you'll show the different cities available or different locations depending on which one you're currently on. And then future enhancements, we aren't going to do it at this time, but potentially add later on more cities, more locations, crowdsourcing feature for other people to add locations, additional details about the spots, and allow users to search. Well, wow, that seems pretty sophisticated. Is it, get, is it gathering this information from the hotspot itself, or do you have like a pre-built table? We would, we would preload the information at this time. So are you, you just using lists or database? Yeah, lists. Lists? Okay. Yeah, and then you're just showing on the map. You're gonna, part of the data in the table is the 
latitude and longitude or something like that that you can pinpoint on a map? Correct. Well, it gets a little ahead of where we've covered so far here in Hartford at least, but that's very nice. And uh, have any, um, have you already started building it out? I have not, but I saw the one tutorial with uh, the map that was optional on the lessons on unit three. Mm -hmm. So I was going to be referencing that when building it. Okay. I would say, you know, one way to scale it so that it doesn't get too out of hand is keep the number of sites fairly small. Yeah, that's what we plan on doing for this first one. Yeah. Okay, Pauline, any, any questions for you from you? No. Looks good, Dan and James. Is that James speaking? Yes. Looks nice. Nice work. All right. Thank you. Okay. Last but not least, Angelia and Josh. And thanks, everybody, for hanging on. Okay, guys uh, and gals. Um, in the interest of time, I have something already set up. So um, uh, does everybody see a screen with a, like a video on there? Is that, is that up and run on your, your guys' end? Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna play it and we'll go from there. That way I don't have to talk too much. And so here we have um, our homework tracker and it basically is a application that allows the student or the user to select what class um, the homework is in, uh, add an assignment description and a due date and then add that to a list that populates underneath um, or, uh, you know, Screen. So I have one in here, which is uh, the computer science create project July 8th, uh, which is due. So um, I can, uh, that was saved. It's a uh, persistent data. So it's saved in the tiny DB. Uh, I can delete it simply by touching it. Um, and then I can re-add it. So here I have a bunch of like lists, you know, computer science, social studies, a bunch of this, you know, electives one and two, but let's say computer science will add the same thing. But with assignment description, this is just a text box. Uh, I will put create project number one, like done, and then we'll click a due date, and that's going to be, I think, Thursday or Friday. Thursday, I think it's supposed to do tomorrow. So we'll click OK, and then we'll click add, and then that'll go ahead and add it. Um, so basically what it does is it separates the class, the actual project or the assignment, and the date, my little vertical lines. I uh, haven't quite figured out how to change the font colors. Um, all the forums say that it's, it's basically uh, not an option yet in App Adventure to change the font colors of the, um, of the way the list populates. So uh, I'm going to try and get creative and perhaps create three list views in a horizontal arrangement and assign um, each list, uh, each element like the class, the assignment description, and due date its own uh, little cell in, in the uh, horizontal arrangement of the list view and see if we can get that to work. But right now this is kind of what it does and it's working pretty well. Um, and if I add another one, you know, I have a science, uh, let's say I have, you know, you know my, my uh, all right, I'm not going to keep on. It just, it, it populates it again and does the thing. Uh, we, we came up with the idea, um, just because our, our kids have like, they do a terrible job at like keeping track of what homeworks do. So this was, uh, Angelia came up with a, a nice user interface here and uh, I just kind of went crazy and coded it. One thing that we have to add is like a completed or not completed like little checkbox there. But other than that, I think that's kind of where we're at. Um, Can you also delete things from the list? I'm sorry? Can you also delete things from the list? Sure, so there's a, there's a, Embedded in the code already. If you just touch the list, if you just touch the item, it goes away. Uh, okay. You know, there's also a long. Well, I'm not sure. What, that's a list view. Uh, that's that's a list view, correct? So if you don't want it to just go away, what if they touch it by mistake? Uh, yeah, that that was kind of why we wanted to do the complete completed yes or no. Um, well, so you box. could you could make it. When it's touched, bring up a notifier. A, notif a notifier, right? That confirms they want to delete it or not. Yeah, so if we look right here, um, I have, oh crap. 
That's okay. Um, yeah, it's it's. I have a notifier in there. I just haven't I haven't started messing with it yet. I just I was up till twelve o'clock doing this last night, so I was having a little fun. But anyway, uh, that's where we're at. Um, and I, I think we're gonna keep uh keep keep on trucking tomorrow and see if we can get the these uh these completed yes or no check boxes taken care of. Very nice. So um, you want to go back to the full screen I mean, to the to group, us group view. Oh, he wants me to cut you off. No, that's cool. I'll stop sharing. All right. <laughs> nice work. Thank you. So nice work, everybody. Um, one thing you, you'll notice is that some of the some of the participants have prior experience or more experience or more time um, to work on these apps than others, and that's okay because I think you're going to find the same thing in your classroom. So you, it, you're going to find that you know. Uh, some students will pick fairly modest projects, and, and that's right for them, and others will pick more advanced projects, and that's all fine. But these were all really neat projects, from this, even the simple ideas to ones that were more complex, all great ideas. Though. So, one great work. So I guess now, for those of you who haven't, um, already started programming. Tomorrow is going to be mostly programming day, right? So we'll be expecting to get emails saying, how come this doesn't work and how come that doesn't work? And uh, <laughs> we'll be around to try to respond to those. So AIA files attached to an email would be fine. If you're uh, going to be asking checks. questions about why something doesn't work and you expect a helpful answer, the more information you can provide, the better. So you have to, for example, put a screenshot of what's going wrong in your email so we can actually look at something um, rather than just getting it from your description. So try to be specific when you're asking questions about issues or bugs and things like that. Any, any final thoughts? I think we've run a little over today, but that's okay with us. Any final questions or thoughts? Thanks a lot, everybody. You guys had some great ideas. Tell her that. Um, so, I, so if there's no other questions, I think there was one question I saw via the um, the Google group that was being asked about when you're done, what should you be writing up? Um, you should have the how to write up a portfolio write up, uh, which has you know all of the components that are listed there. There's a checklist on the first page. The second and third page tell you what to add. So things like your screenshots of what the app looks like, um, your elevator pitch in written format. Um, take a look at the college board questions and, and try to give them an, a try at, at answering them. So adding that under your description of your app. And then also get some practice with making a video. So some of you did that already. Um, we suggested you know, going into the Play Store, downloading a screen recorder, give it a try with making just a one minute video that describes how your app works. Okay, good, great work everyone. We'll talk tomorrow. All right, thanks guys, appreciate it. Thanks a lot, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone. Going.